video I want to talk a little bit about the options you have available to you in live view shooting. That's with the T4i switch to set to on. Um, and paying specific attention to the focus methods that you have. So let's dive right in. Everything on this back of the screen is pretty much touch sensitive. I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way as much as possible by using the buttons along the side. And you can get into our options by pressing the Q and that brings up our menu for in live view. But before I do that, I'm gonna cycle through using the info button. There's a variety of information that you can have displayed on the back of the camera. And pressing the info button, will cycle through lots of information, including all of your settings currently. Pressing info again brings up uh, the histogram. I'll have a video coming about that soon. And a very clean look with none of your settings and pressing it one more time will bring us back to where we started. And this is my preferred view. Um, it has kind of basically what you need to know or what I think you should need to know when you're shooting your shutter speed and your aperture, your exposure indicator, your um, ISO, and how many shots you have left and how your battery is doing. This little icon down here is the touch to shutter button. We'll, um, I'm going to keep that off for now, but I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Let's go back into the menu settings, as I said, by pressing Q, or I could touch that Q in the top right corner of the screen. And let's talk first about our autofocus methods when we're shooting in live view. So we have uh, four different methods available to us. This AF method with tracking. We have flexi zone multi, flexi zone single, and quick mode. So, and if you have the little feature enabled on um, in the menu, this will bring up this information that tells you that the camera will focus on faces or on subjects selected by touch. Um, as you can see there, I didn't touch anything, but it just decided, and this little scene I have here of two potted plants, that that should be my subject, or it thinks it should be my subject, and oh, nope, it just decided that something else should be my subject. Um, so when you're letting the camera decide, you're doing just that. You're letting the camera decide, and it may not make the best decision for you. So you should help it out by touching the screen. But if there are not faces in your screen, um, you should not use this mode, but because, because it prioritizes face tracking in this first mode that we're in here, this the face plus tracking, um, it prioritizes those, and so it takes a little bit longer to search the scene for faces before it really tries to focus. So if there are no people with faces in your scene, then you're better off using the next option, which is flexi zone multi. I'll actually show you why the third option, the flexi zone single, is my favorite in just a second. But this one is very similar to the first. It looks at the whole scene, tries to decide what your subject is. And I'm, I was just holding down the shutter button halfway to force focus here. Um, and it decided that this potted plant in the foreground was my subject. It was taking up just enough that it decided that. And you can see that it's focusing on that. If I move it over here to the side a little bit, and refocus. It really kind of has decided that that is a spot. Oh, now there it goes in the background. Now, you can touch on the screen. This is one of those nice things about this touch screen to help it decide what your subject is. So I just touched, drew this um, large four corner box around my scene. I can touch over here and maybe a little bit further over here. No, I can't quite get to the edge. That is why I'm going to return to the flexi zone. Single. This is my favorite because you get a single simple box and where that box is is your point of focus and I can get it over here to the edge There it goes And I can get it all the way over there And you can see that it refocuses It's also important to know that wherever that box is if you hit the magnify it's going to magnify 5x and again to 10x and that's a good way to achieve focus. Now, obviously, this is not going to work well for things in motion um, because we are now quite zoomed in. You're very close. Uh, and keeping something that's moving um, is going to be very tricky. Live view in general is not quite foc autofocus during live view in general. It's not quite fast enough to really keep up with um, things that are moving unless they're moving very slowly. Snail's pace, I would even say. Um, but for composing, macro, still life, landscape, it's really nice to be able to have this big view on the back of your screen that gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. So that was AF, uh, what we call this one, flexi zone single is what they call it. And you can 
touch to put that box wherever you want. You can also move it using the control pad, the little directional buttons on the control pad. Um, but, you know, it's much nicer just to touch. I really like that feature. The last method is an interesting one and can be very useful. What this does is, as I said, live view is fairly slow to focus. It's not using uh, the big brains of the camera. The big brains are used when the light comes in, bounces off the mirror, and goes to what, the real focusing engine of the, the camera. In live view quick focus, what it does is it flips that mirror back down for a second, lets it get focus, and then flips it back up for you to get live view. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, it may have sounded like it just took a picture. It did not take a picture. In fact, if I press play, well, that's an, a picture I took a few minutes ago, so that doesn't count. What, has, what that noise is coming from is the mirror flipping down, getting focus, and flipping back up. And see how fast it is? I'm going to select that little point right there. It's quite fast. Faster than when we are in live view and we touch to focus, and it goes woot, woot, back and forth. So it's interesting to note that these points on the screen right now, I hope that you can see those fairly well, um, are the same that you see when you look through the viewfinder. And those can be controlled by pressing this little button on the top right corner of your camera, and then you can rotate the dial. Oh, maybe I'm wrong about that in this view. And you can touch. If you're looking through the viewfinder with live view off and you push this button on the front here and rotate the dial, it will cycle through the different points. Most of the time, when I am photographing through the viewfinder, and that is where I'm photographing most of the time, I have only the center point selected. That really lets you decide what the camera is focusing on. So I'm not suggesting you use this quick view method, but what I'm saying is when you're looking through the viewfinder, use the center dot only and put it you know, on your area of focus, where you want to focus, and the higher contrast areas are better. Notice that I chose that edge. I've lifted the camera a little bit to choose that edge between the light and the dark of the pot. And if I don't want my picture to look like that, maybe I, I, can just, I can just recompose. And then now I can take the picture. I kept the shutter button held halfway down so that it would um, not try to refocus as I recomposed. So it's not refocusing because I'm holding the shutter button halfway down. So um, I, really, I really advocate for you being in control of your camera um, and... Uh, knowing what your camera is focusing on. That's one of the things that I think folks new to these cameras, uh, they let it decide what to focus on, and, uh, and it doesn't always make the best decision. It's definitely gotten better over the years, but again, it doesn't always make the best decision. I've got a little U-turn symbol here, which will reselect all of my points. And if I do quick focus here, it will decide which point to use. And I think it's very difficult to see, but this bottom left point had turned green, which meant that the camera decided that that is the point that it should focus on. And if we move it over here a little bit more, it decided the center point. So again, that might not be a terrible thing, but you're letting the camera decide, and really, it, you should um, decide. That may have been a little confusing, because I was talking about live view, but I was also talking looking through the viewfinder. So if you have any questions about that, let me know, and if I can, I will make more videos um, addressing just that in the future. But now let's return to our, our Q men menu. I'm gonna go back to flexi zone single, since that makes the most sense most of the time when I'm shooting in live view, and we'll leave it right there. Notice that the camera is focusing right away um, when I'm in this method, and you can disable that by going into continuous AF and saying disable, and then it'll only focus when you press the shutter button down. That's just something to be aware of. Okay, I think that was good for the autofocus. Now, most all of the rest of these, um, are not unique to live view. They're available to you as options whenever you're shooting. Your drive mode. Do you want to take a single photo, continuous shooting, self-timer, and self-timer with a number of shots to set up? Those are options. Your image quality. And again, you could just touch down here, and so um, you are changing the image quality. Your flash control. You can have the built-in flash, the easy wireless flash I have a video about, and custom wireless flash. We're just going to leave that on normal. Over on the other side, oops, we have our white balance, 
most of the time you're fine to leave it on auto white balance, especially if you're shooting raw. It's very easy to adjust white balance in post um, if you're shooting raw, and it's pretty easy to do as well um, in JPEG, not quite as easy. Your picture styles. Again, I shoot raw and I very rarely use these, but if you are unhappy with the way the JPEGs look coming out of your camera, you should explore the picture style options. They allow more saturation, uh, adding more sharpness, and a variety of other uh, processing factors that you can do to your pictures um, before you even download them from the camera. This is your auto lighting optimizer. Again, shooting raw, it is ignored, but if you shoot JPEG, it tries to bring a little bit more detail out of the shadows and also to save your highlights from being blown out if you're shooting a scene. Um, so it, it is a little helpful. Metering mode. You have your standard evaluative metering mode, which is, as it says, ideal for most scenes. I leave mine here 95% of the time, I think, is, is a safe bet to say. The um, partial metering uh, gives you a little bit more weight in the center there. And then spot metering is picking a very specific spot and metering that. In general, metering means the camera trying to decide how to expose the scene, what shutter speed and aperture to suggest for you and to let you know how it's going to. Remember, cameras want to basically make everything about 18% gray in lightness value. That doesn't mean they want to make everything black and white, um, but it does mean that about that lightness. So if you're photographing snow, it's going to try to make it a little bit darker. Um, if you're photographing a black wall, it's going to try to make it a little bit lighter. Um, so that's just something to be aware of, and I'll have more talking about that in the future. So those are the options shooting still under live view. There are different options when you're shooting in video mode, and obviously live view will be on, and we will talk more about those soon. Don't forget that you can also touch these down here, the shutter speed and the aperture to change those as well. And I really love that you can see in real time the feedback on the screen of what is going to happen when you shoot, uh, when you change your aperture. All right now I'm shooting with the 40 f 2.8, so I can go all the way down to 2.8, and I can change my shutter speed as well by just coming back, touching on shutter speed, and you can see that if I slowed my shutter speed way down, the scene's going to get much brighter. If I speed my shutter speed up, not letting in as much light, the scene is going to get much darker. And I can also change my ISO down here as well. And again, more the more sensitive, the higher the number, the more sensitive your sensor is, letting in more light or um, more sensitive to that light. And I think I was at 400, which is decent. And of course, the focusing to touch the focus. I'll have another video coming soon about the options in live view when you're shooting video and the histogram as I mentioned and if you have any questions please leave a comment down below or find me over on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching.